All right, so this is 4C number two, the practice answers. So first thing, we're going to do 5 through 12 here. So for number five, we always need to have it in the form, the standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Well, we see right away that's not equal to zero, so we need to move it. I Move the, the constant term. I always try to think about the A first. A is always, I always try to keep A positive, which it is, which is great. Um, that'll make factoring or even the quadratic formula, any way you're solving it, is much, much easier. Um, just less steps to it. Now, we're looking at, first thing with factoring is A times C. So A times C is, I'll do it over on the right, A times C is 1 times 9 is 9. So now we have to think of the factors of 9. So 1 times 9, 3 times 3, negative 1 times negative 9, negative 3 times negative 3. Those are all of our factors. Which one of those will add to the B? And that is negative 3 plus negative 3. All right, so now we're going to use that. We're going to use it within the Punnett square. Ooh, that's not a very good square, but we'll we'll make it do, make it work. All right, so negative 3 and negative 3. So first you put the A term in the top left, C term bottom right, and then it doesn't matter which one, which number, and they're the same, so it really doesn't matter. But negative 3 and negative 3, you've got to have negative 3N, because negative 3N minus or plus negative 3N is a negative 6N, which is the B. Now you take your greatest common factors out of each row. So the top row is N, bottom row is 3. If the first term of the two that you're uh, taking out is negative, you always bring a negative with it. And the first column is N, last column is 3. The first term that you're taking out on in the column is negative, so it's going to be negative. So our factors are N minus 3 and N minus 3, which two things multiplied together are exact same you can write it as a square so either way is fine for me all right number two so again we have looks like we don't have the middle the b term n squared minus n minus two so you have one n squared minus n minus two so we have a times c so that's one times Negative 2 equals negative 2. What two numbers multiply to negative 2 that add up to B, which is negative 1? So we have, let's see here, the factors of negative 2 are negative 1 and 2, negative 2 and 1. All right, that's pretty easy. Which ones add to negative 1? Well, it looks like negative 2 plus 1. So we're going to use that in the Punnett square. Still not a very good square, but we'll make do. First term, A term top left, C term bottom right. The next two, so negative two and one, go in the other two, but they have to add up to the middle term, which has an N, so we're gonna put N with them. Take out your greatest common factor, the bottom row, top row, first column, last column. Uh, there's nothing there, so it'd just be a one. So we have N plus 1, and n minus 2. And there's your factors. Number 7. We have, again, got to add the c term. So it's k. Make fun of my k's, that's fine. A is 1, C is 3, so 1 times 3 is 3. So now factors of 3 is 1 times 3, and negative 1 times negative 3, not too many. Which one of those adds up to negative 4? There we go. So put out at your Punnett square. First A term is in top left, C term is bottom right. It's a positive 3. Make sure you when it's equal to 0, when your quadratic equation equals 0. What are the two numbers that add up to the B term is negative 1K and negative 3K from what we circled. Greatest common factors of each column and each row. So the bottom row, I'll start there. 
Now it's a negative, so it's going to be a negative 1. Top row is a K. First column is a K. Last column is a 3. And since that first term is negative, we'll bring a negative with it. So you have K minus 3 and K minus 1. Number 8. Well, same thing. Got to add no like terms, so it's going to be X squared plus 6X plus 8 equals 0. A is 1. C is 8. So we have what two numbers multiply to 8 that add up to 6. So we have 8 and 1, 4 and 2, and that's it there. So we got negative 8, negative 1, negative 4, negative 2. Well, which ones add up to positive 6? Well, we could have stopped at 4 and 2. So top left is the A term. Bottom right is the C term. And the 4 and the 2 are going to split up to B term. So 4X and 2X. So bottom row is 4, the greatest common factor. Top row is X. First column is X. Last column is 2. X plus 2. 2 is positive. So there. And X plus 4. Number 9. All right. Still, so the B term needs to get moved. I moved the B term because the A term is positive. I want to always try to keep the A term positive. So now we have A times C is 12. What two numbers multiply to 12? 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 12 times 1. And you also have the negatives. There, sometimes we forget about them, but two negatives always multiply to a positive. Which one of those adds up to positive 7? Well, 3 and 4 do, does. All right, Punnett square. First term, A term, top left. C term, bottom right. The 3 and 4 go in. And in the middle term, the B term is X, so 4X plus 3X. Now take out your greatest common factors of each row. So bottom row is 3, top row is 2X. First column is X, last column is 2 so you have x plus 2 and 2x plus 3. Number 10. Still got to do this. Add 25, so we got to make it equal 0. So a term is 2. So it's 2 times 25. Oh, no, big number. 50. When two numbers multiply to 50, 1 times 50, 2 times 25, 5 times 10, and is that it? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, we You can do the negatives, but you could actually stop and see that the B term is positive, so which two numbers will add up to 15? Well, we already have it, 5 and 10. Once you have the numbers, you can stop. You don't have to keep going. Great practice, but you don't have to. First, A term, top left. C term, bottom right. 5x, 10x. Greatest common factor of the bottom row. Greatest common factor of the top row. Greatest common factor of the first column. Greatest common factor of the last column. So you have x plus 5. 2x plus 5. There's your factors. Last one. Add 16M. I'm going to probably run out of room for this one, but I'm going to try. So we have A times C, so 3 times. Oh, boy, this is negative 36. What two numbers multiply to negative 36 that add up to 16? Oh, boy. So we have... 3 and negative 12. Mm, you have 1 times negative 36. 2 times negative 18. Well, I can see that 2 and negative 18 up to negative 16. I want positive 16. So you're really going to just switch the signs on the negative 2 times 18. They'll add up to positive 16. So I'm going to just jump straight to the Punnett square from that. So top First column is 3, or first top left is A, bottom right is C, and negative 2M 
and 18M. Doesn't matter the order you write them in. Bottom row, negative two. Top row is 3M. First column, M. Last column, six. So you have 3M minus two and M plus six. Last problem, add eight. So there could be a lot more terms than this that you'd have to put together. Each one is just one term here that you have to move. Five times eight, 40. What two numbers multiply to 40? That'll add up to negative 41. So you have five and eight, two and 20, one and 40. I can see one and 40 add up to 41 positive, but we need a negative. So that means must be this negative one. Yep, that'll add up to negative 41. So now we need to move to Punnett square. First term is five n squared. Last term is eight and the middle terms, negative 40 n and negative one n. Again, doesn't matter the order you write those, the two numbers you're splitting up. Last column or last row, bottom row is negative eight because the first term is negative. Top row is just n, first column, five n. Last column, oh, it's just a negative one, negative because of the negative here. So it's five n minus one and n minus eight. Doesn't matter where you write those in either. All right, let me know if you have any questions.